Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video. Hello. So it feels like we haven't done like a sit down video <laughs> in ages. Yeah, we've been uh, doing a few staycations at some Merlin attractions, so some UK theme parks and uh, you've really enjoyed them which has been great. So yeah, we went to... Alton Towers and we went to Chessington and mm. both times we stayed in themed rooms. Yeah. And we stayed in the Arctic Explorer in Alton Towers and the Giraffe Room <laughs> at the Chessington Safari Hotel and both of them were so good. We were like so pleasantly surprised yeah. um, by what the UK has to offer and we only went for one night both times but it felt like a proper little holiday in staying yeah. Yeah, it was really lovely and it's, uh, it's something that we'd love to try and do again uh, yeah. in the future. But today's video, uh, we thought because we did a, it was meant to be a quick fire top three <laughs> favourites of Disneyland Paris, we thought we'd do another one of Walt Disney World yes. and quite fit in as we were supposed to be in Walt Disney World. So we thought we'd bring a bit of Walt Disney World into our channel yes and i kind of go through stages sometimes i'm like oh no my heart hurts too much to like watch vlogs about it but then other times i'm like i just want to talk about it yeah just because i miss it so much that i just love talking about it <laughs> um so it's just going to be a nice chatty all about Walt Disney World uh, video. So if you fancy that, grab a cuppa or drink of your <laughs> choice. Uh, not sure how long it's gonna be, <laughs> um, but it might be quite a chatty one. Who knows with us? <laughs> so number one is rides. Now, of course, with everything, because Walt Disney World is so much bigger than Disneyland Paris, um, it was actually, I found it a bit trickier mm -hmm. to choose because there was just so much to choose from. And also we haven't um, done everything. So with rides, we haven't been to the new Star Wars area. We haven't been on the Toy Story rides. Um, so we'll definitely probably do this video once we've been again. Yeah. Um, but we're just going to stick to rides that we've done. And so. I just decided to pick the first things that came into my memory. Yeah. So that I wasn't umming and ahhing. Because <laughs> if, if I sat there and thought about it too long, I'd think about other rides and then I'd be like swapping and changing. Difficult. Yeah. So first things that came into my head, those are the ones that went down. So the way it'll work is we'll go three, two, one. Yes. So from, I hate saying least favourite. It's not least favourite. It's just... It's in third place. Third place. But still a favourite because <laughs> yeah, I made the top three. Exactly. Uh, and then up to uh, our favourite. Um, so yeah, number three for me is... We're not going to make it. We're not going to make it. It's Dinosaur, which you'll find in Animal Kingdom. And it's a dark ride. I believe it uses the same ride technology as the Indiana Jones ride, which is in Disneyland in California. Um, so you're in this Jeep and it just moves along these tracks. So it's just bumpy up and down all yeah. the way through. Makes me giggle so much. But it also is quite frightening. At yeah, times. it is. We forgot how frightening <laughs> it was. We went on it on our last trip and we were like, we don't remember it being that scary. Yeah. Like, it's, it's really dark at times. Very dark. And then you've got the dinosaurs that just pop it out yeah. of everywhere. And there's one very scary dinosaur uh, indeed. But uh, <laughs> love it. Love the pre-show. Uh, love the ride. And then I love afterwards as well. Something quite subtle, which we only noticed the last time, which was the the video of Dr. Seeker trying to run around to find the oh, dinosaur yeah. that we'd brought back on the monitor. Also, when we've been, we've never had to queue that crazy for it. We get quite no. a lot of fast passes, but then when we do queue, it's not too long. Um, so I think it's quite a quick ride at like, getting people through, yeah. which is good. Um, but yeah, that didn't make my top three. My number three is Tower of Terror. Oh yeah, that didn't make mine. Because I love Tower of Terror at Walt Disney World. It's, it's slightly different to Disneyland Paris, although the new revamp for Disneyland Paris is epic. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, but with Walt Disney World, it's slightly different because the actual lift moves before it starts yeah. um, and then you have the dropping. Um, but I love Tower of Terror. It's one of my favourite rides, both at Paris and in Walt Disney World. And you've done them both now. Done them both. <laughs> that, that, but that one where it started moving through the hotel, I was like, how is this possible? I know. <laughs> um, but it's in Hollywood Studios, which is one of our favourite parks. And we just always have to go on Tower of Terror. Um, always. It's like a must. Yeah. <laughs> so in at number two for me is Expedition Everest. <laughs> I think, like last time, there's going to be a few where you've put number one and As... I've put number two. So... Uh, you go, and then I'll tell you okay. what number two is. 
So Expedition Everest, I won't say too much because I'm sure Mark will chat about it. <laughs> Expedition Everest is one of the best roller coasters at Walt Disney World. The first time we went on it, I think we only went on it once on our first holiday. And we didn't really like acknowledge how good it was. Uh, we enjoyed it, but it wasn't until our second holiday that we really fell in love with it. We went on it so many times. We went on it in the dark and it just makes it that much like better. And it's just so good. It has so many different elements to it. I won't give it away in case you haven't been on it, but it's a roller coaster with a twist. It has a lot of different things going on and it's just so much fun and it's in my favourite park. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number two for me, I won't say too much because <laughs> Helena can speak about this ride for <laughs> quite a long time. Uh, this is Flight of Passage. So Flight of Passage, also in Animal Kingdom. I think all of mine actually are from Animal oh, yeah. Kingdom. It does have the best rides. <laughs> um, so yeah, it is Flight of Passage. It's based on Avatar. Uh, go through Pandora and it's a one that was notorious when we went for having like really long wait times mm -hmm. and we didn't know if we'd be even be able to get on it but then somebody told us that on a night time they tend to put the the wait time up exaggerated yeah so we joined it thinking it was gonna I think it said like two hours on the board yeah it was but then we long. only waited an hour for it we managed to get on it twice within our trip mm, without and, fast passes but even waiting an hour in the queue I didn't mind because the queue had different sections. I think this is what also makes a ride so special is when there's things to keep you entertained mm -hmm. in the queue. Um, so like with pre-shows and stuff. So yeah, you got the different rooms and then you've got the amazing uh, animatronic yeah. uh, that you see. You don't see it if you do the fast pass. No. <laughs> um, but yeah, amazing seeing that. And then oh, just flying on a, is it a banshee? Banshee. Yeah, flying on a banshee. It just feels like you are. I mean, there's not much more you can say, really. Um, incredible ride technology that's been used. It's the first time I've sort of been on any ride like that before. And uh, yeah, that's number two for me, Flight of Passage. So I think our number one and two are just switched. Yeah. Ready? Three, two, one. Flight of Passage. Oh, I couldn't say it at the same time because well, I would have spoken over you. Yeah. Expedition Everest. <laughs> so yeah, literally just switched. Um, but yeah. Hands down, Flight of Passage is my favourite ride of all time. It may get bumped for Rise of the Resistance because a lot of people love mm. Rise of the Resistance. Um, I can't see it happening, but you never know. Um, just because I love the whole story of Flight of Passage. Um, I just think it's such a special ride and it really does like honestly take my breath away. Mm -hmm. Like I have to take a moment when I come off it just to be like, <laughs> like I'm just so blown away by it all and um, the technology is insane how it just makes you feel like you're actually in that world and it's not really like a ride it's more of like an experience mm. and I just absolutely love it if you're gonna go on one ride at Walt Disney World I would say Flight of Passage is the one to go on yeah and then my uh, number one is Expedition Everest uh, the theme of it is incredible so you've got the actual exterior which is uh, Everest um, and then the queue lines really good as, as well um, you're sort of searching for the the lost Yeti Yeti the Yeti's gonna um, the get Yeti's you, gonna get you. <laughs> uh, and then yeah I think Helda said uh, said most of, of what I was gonna say um, it's definitely a, ride it in the dark if you can yeah it's an amazing it adds to it so much amazing roller coaster <laughs> got a very steep drop uh, lots of twists and turns and lots of twists <laughs> <laughs> to it. Um, phenomenal view <laughs> yes. as well if you're sat at a certain... Uh... <laughs> yeah, if you can ride it at the front as well, highly recommend. <laughs> highly recommend. At the front in the dark, you're set. Yeah. <laughs> but anywhere is good. <laughs> okay, so that's rides. And mm -hmm. now we're moving on to the second category, which is restaurants. Yes. Now this one's a little bit bittersweet because we've... Um, haven't stayed at Disney World with the dining plan and our honeymoon was going to be the first time that we stayed there with the dining plan so we had planned to go to so many different restaurants which fingers crossed will happen one day yeah um so our restaurant 
selection. knowledge yeah, yeah, yeah is a little bit limited compared to people that have done the dining plan and um, so again we've just gone with restaurants that we have loved and have been to i'm sure yeah. there's so many out there um that you'll be like shouting at us like this is amazing um but these are the ones which we've been to so far yeah we could have chosen ones that we'd like to go to but i thought it made more sense to choose ones we'd actually we'd, um, we'd actually dined at okay so in at number three for me 50s primetime cafe uh oh no it's not the same <laughs> so i love 50s primetime cafe the food is good like the food is great but it's not really the food that makes it into my top three <laughs> it's the experience it's just so much fun the theming of it is amazing it's in hollywood studios and it's set out like you're having um lunch or dinner at like your grand's house in the 50s <laughs> yeah um, it has all like the 50s decor and um, the menu is like all 50s like themed food um, but <laughs> it's the cast members that make it so much fun yeah. um, they're so mean <laughs> um, <laughs> so they tell you to like get your elbows off the table I mean it doesn't sound very fun to have someone shouting at you, but it is really yeah. fun. It's like mean, mean in a fun... In a funny way. <laughs> yeah, way. You know that they're doing it to make your experience better. Yeah. It's not like scary at all. Like it's fun. Like they make it really fun. Um, but it's just a completely different dining experience to anything I've ever experienced because yeah. it was so immersive. It's just really good fun. I really like it. Uh, in at number three for me is place that we went to on my birthday on our very first trip. And that was the sci-fi drive-in oh, diner. That nearly made mine. It was between 50s and the sci-fi. Uh, we actually, were we, we were going to go again, weren't we, mm. I think? We were going to um, go to both again. Yeah. Uh, so it set out like a, a drive-in diner, again, like from the 1950s. Yeah. Um, so all these uh, tables are set up in vintage cars, or they look like vintage cars. And then you sit in, <laughs> sit in yeah. the car with a little little table uh, and then on the big screen in front of you they show trailers for B movie like horrors yeah <laughs> it's and just some really cartoons. fun yeah and cartoons and then you've got it looks like you're outside at night yeah they which, make it really good like you're obviously inside but the yeah. atmosphere they make it really really cool which is incredible and uh, yeah uh, we had some really nice food there some good memories and so yeah number three sci-fi driving down so in at number two for me, Yak and Yeti and Yak and Yeti oh, quick yeah. service. Uh, we did actually plan to go to Yak and Yeti the restaurant um, on our honeymoon, um, but so far we've only done Yak and Yeti quick service. But the food is just so good. The honey chicken is just one of the best quick service meals I've I had at yeah. Walt Disney World. I think I had the teriyaki beef as and well. That was good that was as well. So if you're looking for a good quick service with really nice food. Yak and Yeti. It's always been super fast when we've been there. We've always managed to get a table. Um, it's in Animal Kingdom, which of course you know we love. And what what puts it on my top three is the food. Yeah. The actual food was so good. Really loved it. I think I went for restaurants that we'd sat down in. Oh, so yeah. otherwise I would I think I would have included Yak and Yeti, but because we'd only done the quick service, mm. I didn't include it on my list. But uh, in at number two is the Primetime Cafe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Number two was that for me. Again, just for like what Helena was saying, the whole overall experience. experience. <laughs> and then even you, if you get a table next to like one of the TVs, they show uh, 50s television programs. So the Dick Van Dyke show was on there. And actually <laughs> from there, I ended up watching on Netflix did, a lot of Dick you? Van Dyke show. Yeah, <laughs> quite liked it. So I think we've got the same number one. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Ahana. Ahana. Yay. Ahana is just the best. Everything about it. Love the Polynesian resort. Love the view from the windows. You mm -hmm. can just see the whole of Magic Kingdom. The food. I'll let you talk about the food. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll just say the food was lovely. The food is so good. Uh, and the they food, just keep bringing yeah, it out. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, they just they just keep bringing it. Once you've sort of finished, they'll come over and ask if you want any more. Again, uh, we must say that everything we're mentioning within this is all based on our experiences of going before the whole oh, yeah. COVID situation. So anything that we mentioned that might be different 
Um, it's just because we don't know what it's like over there yeah, we at, at this moment. Um, but yeah, so they just uh, kept bringing you over this food uh, and, and I loved it. Yeah, it was it was really, really nice. And then the big, big bread and uh, butter, was it bread and butter sort of dessert? What was uh, it? Pineapple um, it's like a big upside down cake. I think oh, right. Yeah, food. it was a big sponge thing. Yeah. Oh, it's just so good. They had some entertainment as well. They had a ukulele player yeah. who sang lots of Elvis songs, oh, which yes. is in keeping with like um, Stitch and like the Hawaiian and feel. Hawaii, yeah. And it was just so much fun. I I really loved it. And we went at about four o'clock, so we went for like a late dinner early, um, a late lunch early dinner. But if you went for dinner, then you can also watch the fireworks as well from the window. You got given um, a lay. Really special. Yeah, we wore that all wear. night, didn't yeah. we? <laughs> I could wear my, I could rock out my uh, Hawaiian shirt. Ah, <laughs> oh, and it means family. <laughs> so next is snacks. Mm. Now we haven't tried too many snacks at Walt Disney World. Yeah, again. Same as Disneyland Paris. This was something that we were going to be able to do because yeah. we would have had the dining plan and it would have had the snack crate. Two snacks yeah. a day, so we would have tried them all. <laughs> but obviously when we went last time, we were always trying to sort of keep costs down a bit, yeah. aren't we? And um, not buy as many snacks. We also had quite a few like meals. Yeah. So, but we went for the ones that we, we did try. And in at number three for me is a Mickey Premium ice cream bar which is, it's kind of like a, a chalk ice on a stick shaped as Mickey. And it's just, it's like one of those classic things. I think I used to always have one at Hollywood Studios because they had like a, a little uh, place you could get them from. So yeah, it's just a really nice, simple little snack. Um, if you fancy like an ice cream chalk ice kind of feel. Uh, in at number three, uh, sort of similar, but it's the Mickey uh, cookie ice cream sandwich. So this is the one that comes without a stick yes um and it's yeah, a messy it's, one <laughs> yeah it's more of like a biscuit around the ice cream um which i really enjoyed but there was just something that i i liked more might have topped it <laughs> so in at number two for me might be the same as yours the brioche ice cream sandwich completely forgot about it didn't include it on the list <laughs> oh, <laughs> so this is would it probably have made it yeah so this is the brioche ice cream sandwich from the French Pavilion, and I got the name, it's Le Artsien de Glace is the um, shop, and it basically sells loads of different ice creams, um, but one of their main things is this brioche bun, and they put ice cream, and then they press it down to make a sandwich. Oh, it's so good. You can have so many different flavours. I can't remember what we went for. I think we went for like a fruity flavour. That's a uh, strawberry. Raspberry or was strawberry. Was it something with strawberry? It was just so good. I loved it. Um, it's warm, and it oh, it's just so so good. Yeah, I would have, I would have <laughs> gone for that, but I forgot. <laughs> uh, in it, number two for me is just the Mickey ice cream bar, which oh, like is, the one which I is yeah, yeah, which is what Helena was talking about before. Uh, I just much prefer the ice cream uh, and the chocolate on that bar than I do to the uh, ice cream sandwich. It's just easier to hold as well. Yeah. I remember with the ice cream sandwich, we both got them to walk around and I got the bar, so I was like, fine. And then I remember you were like, oh, it's going everywhere. <laughs> and I think our number one should be the same. So my number one is the Goofy's Candy Co. Rice Krispie Treat. Yes. <laughs> Oh, it is just the best. So Rice Krispie Treats are good anywhere. Like you can just buy them uh, packaged up. But if you go to Goofy's Candy Co in Disney Springs, you can create your own from scratch. So you can choose what chocolate, you can choose um, what topping you have and then what chocolate you have drizzled on top. And I think they're a little bit bigger than the packaged ones. Um, and I went for M&Ms with uh, milk chocolate. And it was so good. Yeah, we just got one to share, didn't we? Uh, you got a different one, didn't no, you? No, no. We just got one to share. Oh, did we? Yeah, because it came on that little uh, paper plate, plate. And then we put it in the fridge. Yeah. Uh, at home. And then we just nibbled at it every I now and then. I think then my brother went for like a cookie, cookie crumble mm, or something. Mm. Um, but personally, the M&M's are the best. Uh, my number one is that as well. <laughs> so next is Hotels. Now, we've had to kind of slightly cheat this one because we haven't stayed at a Disney hotel yet. Um, we were obviously going to stay at one for our honeymoon, so fingers crossed in the future. So we've gone for hotels that we like the look of mm -hmm. or that we would love to stay in. Yes. 
So number three for me, Animal Kingdom Lodge. Oh, I didn't. Uh, I I didn't put it on. Oh. Forgot. <laughs> Um, I would love to stay at Animal Kingdom Lodge. Everything about it looks so good. I also really want to try the restaurants there. Um, but I would especially love to stay. Since staying at the Safari Hotel at Chessington World of Adventures, I'd love to stay in one of the rooms overlooking um, the Animal Reserve yeah. at Animal Kingdom Lodge. I just love it. It's so special. And yeah, We've Animal seen, Kingdom Lodge. seen it in many vlogs and it just yeah. looks incredible. Um, well, I actually went for number three. I went for Coronado Springs, which is where we were actually going to go. <laughs> um, that actually made it on mine as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just it looked amazing. We watched a lot of room tours. Uh, it looked like it was our sort of uh, vibe. Uh, the room looked really nice for... Because we, what we were thinking is we wanted somewhere that looked really nice for, like, our honeymoon yes. stay. Um and yeah, we just loved the loved the look of it. Well, um, in at number two for me is Coronado Springs. Ah, uh, right, yeah. Uh, it, it's going to hold a special place in my heart, I and mean, we will get there one day, um, but it's always going to be the place which I think of when I think of our honeymoon. <laughs> and uh, it was it's all just been refurbished, so the rooms are really great. Yeah. It um, has loads of places to eat and drink. Yeah, and I remember that, yeah. There's just so much to do there. It's a huge resort. Uh, there was two pools, wasn't there? Yeah, I think, yeah, there's quite a few pools like dotted around. Mm. And it has the bar up the top as well in the Grand Destino Tower. Mm. Um, everything about it just looked perfect um, for our honeymoon. And it also has quite an adult feel to it as well. So it's Disney, um, but it's not too in-your-face Disney. It also has that like romantic adult feel, which we thought would be perfect for our honeymoon. Yeah. In at number two for me, somewhere I would love to go to, Polynesian. Oh, yeah, you love it, don't you? Yeah, the Polynesian. <laughs> I thought that'd be your number one. Uh, no, and po the Polynesian with its added history of um, the Beatles and John Lennon signing that thing where they disbanded the Beatles. Uh, that's just an added sort of yeah. thing to it. But I love the look of it. Um, a hana on your doorstep. A hana on your doorstep. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to go to Hawaii eventually. And yeah. it sort of gives me that sort of that sort of feel. Uh, I just love the location of it. I liked how it had that little boat that you could take over to Magic so Kingdom. So close to Magic Kingdom. Uh, the little beach area. Yeah. We'd love to stay in one of those huts. Yeah. On the water. <laughs> so in at number one for me, I don't know if it's the same for you. Grand Floridian. Yeah. Is it the same? Same, yeah. So one of my ultimate dreams, bucket list in life, is to stay at the Grand Floridian and I'd love to stay over Christmas. <laughs> it's a very big dream. But one day I would love for that to happen um, when they have the huge Christmas tree in the lobby. Mm -hmm. We saw it on Eleanor Dreaming's vlog where they just walked into the lobby and it just looked so spectacular. Um... I love it. I love the, obviously, the location of it. It's literally right next to Magic Kingdom. And you must just feel that you're in Disney. Like you're, <laughs> you're just in Magic Kingdom. It's just so close. Um, but yeah, just one of my dreams. I'd love to stay there over Christmas. Um, I think it'd be so magical. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to see inside the rooms. I haven't really seen that many vlogs. Um, but I'd love, to, I'd love to see what the rooms are like as well. Yeah. Uh, the same with me. Um, there's always that dream of trying to get into the Disneyland Paris Hotel. Yes. And then there's always the dream of trying to get into the Grand Floridian. Yes. <laughs> so next is shops. Um, again, this was a little bit difficult because I don't feel like we spent that much time in the shops. Uh, I think we spent more time in the shops at Disneyland Paris. Mm. Um, but do you want to start for this one? Yeah, okay. Uh, so num I've got my list here. That's why I keep <laughs> looking down. Uh, number three is the Ye old Christmas shop. And this is in uh, Magic Kingdom, and this is opposite where the Muppets do their their show. Yeah. Um, or we're doing their show. I'm not sure if they're doing it at the <laughs> moment. Uh, great moments in history, Three. but just the American <laughs> parts. Um, yeah, and like how we love the Disneyland Paris Christmas shop, this Christmas shop is amazing as well. I think this one's maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, it is bigger than the Paris one. And it's always uh, one of our things to get a Christmas decoration. Yeah, we've got so. a few decorations from there. And they had a really good selection, I remember. Yeah. Um, I think there was one that I did see where I was like, oh, I wish we'd got that. And I think it was Sully with Christmas lights. Oh, yeah, because we got Stitch wrapped up in Christmas yeah, lights. Yeah, and I think Sully, had, Sully was there as well. Um, <laughs> and it's a running gag that I can never get to meet Sully in Disneyland oh. Paris. <laughs> 
Um, so number three for me uh, is probably a bit random, but it's one which we always seem to go in, and that's Mouse Gear in Epcot. Oh, yeah. We just always seem to go into it, and it has just a good select. It's a huge shop, and it just has a good selection of um, snacks, treats, cloves, everything, really. Um, and it's just one that is It's very conveniently placed in Epcot. And we just always, I just remember we always are like, oh, we must go in Mouse Gear. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I remember I got that Mickey Rice Krispie treat. That frozen there. one, yeah. Before <laughs> That's we maybe watched, why I like before it. Before we watch the Epcot fireworks, yeah. <laughs> but if you're looking for like a good general shop um, to get some merchandise or some snacks, then Mouse Gear is always a good shout. That's a really good one, yeah. I've yeah. forgotten about that. Uh, number two for me is in Animal Kingdom. And this is the Discovery Trading Company. And this is the one as you're walking like towards... Oh, do you remember it? As you're walking towards... Oh, that's Tree of, a good shot. Yeah, you're walking yes. towards Tree of Life. And then I think it's on your right. I forgot about that one. And it's huge. We it's always find really good stuff. Different sections. And um, within it, we also found the soundtracks. The CDs. Yeah, uh, we found the CD for all the music in the parks, which we actually bought. And then there were CDs for like Finding Nemo the Musical and The Lion King and stuff. There was really good clothing items in there. Great mugs. Mugs. There was just tons in oh. this in this shop. And we always, every time we went Animal Kingdom, we would always go in. Oh, that probably would have made it to my list had I remembered it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so number two for me is Ye Old Christmas Shop because uh-huh. everyone knows I love a Christmas shop. Mm-hmm. And that's all really. I just love <laughs> Christmas all year round. I love walking in, looking at all the decorations. We always have to get one Christmas decoration. And yeah, I like Disneyland Paris. I just love it. This year will be the first year that we actually put a Christmas tree up mm-hmm. in our own place and put our decorations on. So excited. Just going to go over here <laughs> um, in the living room. And I'm really excited. See if it topples over with the weight. Yeah, of all these, we uh, need to Disney look at Christmas, Christmas tree. Oh yeah. Um, but I'm excited to actually display all of our Christmas decorations. And slightly off topic, but I got the Primark um, Bulbul Disney Advent calendar last year. Um, but because we didn't have our own Christmas tree, I saved it for this year. Mm. So I'm excited for that as well. And then in at number one for me is in Disney Springs. I think it has to be really because it's just huge again. Uh, World of Disney. World of Disney for me as Isn't well. Isn't it the largest Disney store? It's It must be. It's so big. Yeah. Um, you could get lost in there. It's huge. <laughs> like, if you need a shop where you're definitely going to find whatever you're looking for, high chance it'll be at World of Disney. You can spend a long time walking around there. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if you go to Disney Springs, you could just spend most of your time in there. Yeah. <laughs> It's such a good shop. Um, I remember I always look at the spirit jerseys there because they normally have like every spirit jersey you could ever want. Mm -hmm. Um, There's so many in America. Um, But yeah, World of Disney is is pretty epic. They got plushes, mugs, all sorts. Every piece of merchandise. (laughs) And the actual shop's really cool. Like it has loads of different like good theming to different areas of it. Yeah, it's got stuff on the ceiling, doesn't Mm. it? Yeah. So yeah, definitely World of Disney, number one. So next is parks. So for Disneyland Paris, we did lands, but obviously Disney World has a lot of different lands. Um, so we've gone for parks. I um, found this tricky. Did you? Yeah. Oh, I've, I've got my, I'm set on it's lands. Because bet- it's always between two. Right, in at number three for me, mm-hmm. Hollywood Studios. Oh, is it? Yeah. No. I love Hollywood Studios. It definitely makes my top three. Um, and I think it might creep up a little bit higher once I visit again and it has Star Wars, I see Star Wars land and um, I go on the rides in Toy Story land. But it always has a special place in my heart because of our first trip mm-hmm. and because uh, we went there on the first day on Martin's birthday. And it would just always have that um, like feel to it. Um, but there are just a couple of parks that pip it to the post <laughs> after. <laughs> Uh, number three for me, so people are going to go, oh, uh, Magic Kingdom. Yeah, is, I thought that. Is number three for me. Love, I love it there. <laughs> I, it is. Don't worry about I, I always it. feel like I have to say why. Um, yeah, I love the feel of it there. Uh, there was just a few other things in other parks that, that sort of elevate them a bit higher. And then I think Magic Kingdom has, has always tends to be quite a busy park. Yes. It's quite um, manic, isn't it? And so we haven't managed to get on as many things there as, like, other parks. Yeah. But, I mean, for the Disney feels, 
Magic Kingdom is just incredible because you walk in, you see the castle. So Magic Kingdom is my number two. Uh. Just picked to the post by one other part, which you can probably guess. Um, but again, Magic Kingdom is just so special. I, I guess if you were just looking to go to one park and that was it for one day, then I would probably say Magic Kingdom just because it is Disney. It is pure Disney. You walk in, you see the castle, um, you have all the different like uh, lands, which are like the classic lands. Um, and it's just the most, it's definitely the most Disney park. But there is just one, one land that will pivot to the post. <laughs> you love that phrase. <laughs> pivot to the post. Pivot to the post. Pivot it to the post. <laughs> for, uh, for number two is Animal Kingdom. Oh. For me, this is the one that was hard. I know. It was, <laughs> it was hard. This was going backwards and forwards. Um, yeah, Animal Kingdom has, or well, has all of my favourite rides. At night, it looks amazing finding nemo the musical is there the lion king musical is there there is so much there that it could have been number one for me but well i'll explain why number yeah. one is number one in a minute but yeah i do love animal kingdom so she all know number one for me forever and always animal kingdom i love the atmosphere of that park um, and i think it is because it has the best rides it's got the best shows um it's like i really like rivers of light as well which mm. i think might be going or might have gone um but everything about it i love the animal aspect of it i just love animal kingdom i could spend so many hours there you find it quite relaxing i find it really relaxing yeah. and i think it feels very big like wide open space mm -hmm. um which probably is why it feels more open than like magic kingdom mm -hmm. Um, there's so much to explore. I think the theming is so great. And one of my favorite times is dusk at Animal Kingdom when it's starting to get a little bit dark and the lights are twinkling um, and you just look up at Expedition Everest. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love it, I love Animal Kingdom. All right, number one for me, though it didn't have as many rides when we were there, is Hollywood Studios. Yeah, you love Hollywood Studios. I can't explain it. I think it's maybe just because I'm such a movie fan. Yeah. Um, and I just love the atmosphere of it almost being like you're walking around like a working film set. Because like you have the citizens of Hollywood that are going around doing bits and pieces. And I like the fact that you stumble across things and there's mm. like surprises around every corner. Um, the rides that were there, Tower of Terror, Rock and Roller Coaster. But then some of my favourite memories are at Hollywood Studios. So my birthday and then meeting Woody and Buzz. <laughs> um, and then uh, I just remember loving it at night uh, oh, with the sun yeah. setting. And we got like an amazing picture of Tower of Terror. Yeah. Um, sort of like a ready, red sky. ready purpley sky. Just a lot of fun memories of Hollywood Studios. And now they've got... Toy Story Land, which is my favourite franchise. You've got Star Wars, Galaxy's Edge. I mean, I'm so excited yeah. to get there and see all this. So next is Character Meets. Mm -hmm. And again, we haven't met as many characters as, as I thought. No, so I for this, I mean, there's a few that are, that are in my memory, but for this, I actually had to go through our photos and see mm. who we'd met. And we hadn't met that many. No, that's de <laughs> our next trip, we've got, definitely got to meet a few more characters. Yeah. <laughs> So in at number three for me is Stitch. Oh yeah. And we met Stitch, it was kind of, we weren't planning on it. Um, he just appeared at Typhoon Lagoon and it was just a really fun meet and greet. Um, he gave me a little kiss on the hand and he was really sweet. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had got some great photos. And what I loved about it is that we didn't plan it, like we didn't queue or anything. He just appeared. Um, and I love when that happens. And yeah, we, we love Stitch. Yeah. There was no cue for him, I think, at that point, because no, he just appeared. people didn't know, I don't think. Yeah. Although and I always feel bad, because your mum was off somewhere else. I know. And then we got the photo, and she, she wasn't was like, in the photo. I didn't meet Stitch. <laughs> and what I loved as well is, like, meeting a character at a water park. Like, mm. I wasn't expecting it at all. Um, I just remember I really loved that, that character meet and greet. Yeah. In at number three for me is a one that we talk about quite a lot on the channel. Pretty much any time we mention Olaf. Um, so yeah, it is meeting Olaf. Uh, we met him in, again, Hollywood Studios. Another yeah. one of my favourite memories where we went in and uh, I sort of sometimes struggle with things that I'm going to talk to the <laughs> characters about. Uh, but I sometimes in my head sort of plan what I'm going to say. And for this occasion, it was, you have a 
a beautiful singing voice. Yeah, you have a wonderful, a wonderful singing, voice. singing voice. It was yeah. so sweet. And then um, Olaf was like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> uh, we just loved. We loved meeting Olaf. He yeah. gave very good hugs. Mm-hmm. And then in at number two for me, Buzz and Woody. Oh. And this was pretty much just because I knew how much it meant to you. Um, I obviously loved the meet and greet. It was so much fun. I'm sure Martin will speak about it. Um, but it was so much fun and Buzz did his Spanish mode, which just made it so much fun. Um, but it was just seeing your face and there's a photo when Woody's <laughs> got his hand on your shoulder and you yeah. just look like a little kid again. And um, I know that you'd wanted to meet them for so long. And the queue was pretty long, um, but we decided to do it that day. And it, I knew that it would just be your favourite memory. So special one. Yeah. Like <laughs> happiest moments in life. In terms of photos, I think, and getting engaged and then me being the happiest is like (laughs) with Woody. It's the same smile. (laughs) Oh, loved it. Um, In at number two for me, I think we're exchanging these. Uh, Number two is meeting Mickey Mouse. And this was meeting Mickey Mouse in Magic Kingdom. It was actually one of the first things that we actually did. Yeah, fast um, pass for it. Looking back on our trip in 2018. And what made it really special was that it was the first character that we met with your family. Mm. Um, So the whole family were there and uh, it was your mum's, we were celebrating your mum's birthday. Uh, She was so excited to go and meet Mickey Mouse, like ran up to Mickey Mouse. And then we all got separate photos with with Mickey and it was just really special. Yeah, so that is definitely my number one because those photos are just my favourite to look back on. And it was the first time we'd used our like photo pass um so they were just so astonished that it just popped up we like we literally left walked out the door and they popped up on our phone yeah. and i remember them being like what how'd that happen in it number one for me is of course meeting woody and buzz uh it's just they're my favorite characters if ever i see those characters in the films or even in some of their shorts or if i just see them around the parks i just feel like i've got a warm feeling inside absolutely adore those characters and Woody was like, I think I said to him, you're my favourite deputy, which doesn't make sense because he's the sheriff. <laughs> um, but he was like really happy to see me. He did like a dance in front of the camera. Yeah. Got up really close and then Buzz did the Spanish mode as well. <laughs> so next is bars, which again, we haven't really experienced too much. And um, we haven't been to many of the bars at Walt Disney World. Because we're too busy running around the park. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we kind of had a drink with our meals. So we didn't really go out to just have a drink. So that's definitely something which we'll do in the future. Um, but there are a few. Um, I think we probably have the same three. Mm-hmm. Um that we wanted to share. So number three for me was Dockside Margaritas. Oh, we got these in a different order. (laughs) So this is in Disney Springs. um, And it is, um, so basically it's kind of like a, what would you call it? Like a veranda um, that you can sit at. Yeah. Um, Like a wooden veranda. And then you look out and then you look out onto the big lake at Disney Springs with a huge hot air balloon in the middle. And I remember we actually did, we were waiting for, um, to go to a meal. So we did actually just go there for drinks. And I just remember having a really nice evening there. And it's just a great view of Disney Springs. Mm -hmm. In at number three for me is Baseline Tap House, which is in Hollywood Studios. And this was on a night where me and Helena went to Hollywood Studios. I think it was the first day, wasn't it? Mm, On the night time, we went to Hollywood Studios. We love Hollywood Studios (laughs) on a night time. There's just (laughs) something about it. I don't know what it is um and we were just taking it nice and easy we'd been on some rides and then we thought let's go and have a drink um i think it's very close to star tours mm. um and yeah yeah just had a did we have a cocktail i think i had a cocktail i think you might have had a beer yeah i think they had a selection of beers you could get um so i just remember that being a lovely nice part of the evening so number two for me just double checking is baseline mm. yeah tap house and what we didn't do it but what you could do is you could get a um array of like different beers but like mini ones yeah um so you can get like four or five 
um, with different flavours, which we uh, probably will try next time we're there. I think we saw that on someone's vlog. Saw it on Crispy Small. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, we love it. It has like nice twinkling lights. You can sit outside. And it's just like a really, it looks like a really fun place to go have a drink. Mm. Right in the heart of Hollywood Studios as well. In number two for me is Dockside Margaritas, mm -hmm. uh, which of course Helena has just mentioned. So you get a lovely stunning view. But I think I went for it because of the memory of Helena doing some weird Snapchat <laughs> videos uh, while, we were just, <laughs> while we were just uh, sat there having a drink. <laughs> <laughs> so I think we probably have the same number one. Mm -hmm. Three, two, one. Raglan Road! Road. <laughs> um, so we actually did have some snacks here as well, but we did also just go for a drink. And it was just really fun. It's like a, a proper Irish bar. Um, they had such good entertainment. They had Irish dancers yeah. and an Irish band. And uh, we loved it in there. Really good atmosphere. Yeah, really nice setting. Um, yeah, the, the entertainment was just amazing, I remember. Yeah, and it was like constant. Mm, um, there was always something happening. Yeah, and it's, it's in Disney Springs. So next is Photo Spots. And we've actually gone for photo spots that are part of the memory maker. Yeah. Um, so when there is an actual photographer taking photos yeah. in that spot. Because we, we rarely take our own no. photos because there are so many spots where there are photographers. And it's great if you're a couple because they can get a photo of you both together. Whereas when there's only two of you, it's sometimes hard to get, apart from a selfie, it's yeah. hard to get like a photo of you both. Mm hmm so in at number three for me is an animal kingdom and I can't remember the exact spot, um, we'll insert the photo here, um, but basically you um, take a photo and then behind you is Expedition Everest. I've got the same one. As number three. Yeah, yeah. And we actually got this photo uh, with the whole family and mm -hmm. it's just one of my favourite photos. We got it at dusk. <laughs> yeah. And the lighting's so good. I'm trying to remember where, I think it's as you're, as you're walking around from Dino Land USA mm. as you're walking round towards Expedition Everest and yeah and it has the lake and then it has Expedition Everest in the background yeah. and it's just like in the heart of Animal Kingdom and if you get it like at dusk where the lights are starting to twinkle it's a really lovely photo mm. in at number two so it's the one that you've always got to get it was the first photo that we oh, got I think with we your got the same number two with your family and it is in front of the castle in front of the castle I think we've got the same three oh, two one. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, but for this one as well, it was one of those ones where they insert um, a character, and I remember they inserted Tinkerbell. Yeah. And we're all looking at it. I love those interactive photos because you never know what it's going to be until yeah. it like pops up on your phone, and you're like, ah, that's what we were doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you always have to get the castle photo. Yeah. Right. So I think we might have the same number one. <laughs> Three, two, one, lantern, lantern photo. photo. I never know what you're going to say. You always say three, two, one, but I don't know what you're going to say. Just to see if we say the same. So the lantern photo is taken outside of the tangled toilets. Um, but these are no ordinary toilets. They are stunning toilets. And they have all the lanterns um, outside and you actually hold a lantern. Um, it's only at night mm. and it just makes the most beautiful photos i love them very romantic uh and but also just um i don't know just a lovely moment yeah um if you're like with family or friends holding the lantern i actually got the print of um my whole family um for christmas i think i got it for them on like a metallic um, print and they have it up in their living room and it's just so special it looks so nice if I was to describe it I'd say it's a very hopeful photograph and then last but not least is shows mm. and Walt Disney World have a lot of shows we've also included fireworks in this um, so like shows and fireworks yeah so again these were shows that we we managed to see when we were there um, on our trips hopefully that they they come back they will return um, at some point in the future um, but for number three for me is Indiana Jones stunt show yes that's, that's another one. reason why I love Hollywood Studios uh, Indiana Jones got me Indiana Jones <laughs> mug here absolutely love this character I think I mean this might be controversial I think I prefer 
Indiana Jones to Han Solo in terms of uh, Harrison oh. Ford characters. It's just a great show. It's based around Raiders of the Lost Ark and it has different scenes from the movies that they act out and they do a, a stunt spectacular. And then in at number three for me is Festival of the Lion King. Which <gasps> I forgot! <laughs> in Animal Kingdom and it's my favourite out of the two like more theatrical shows they have in Animal Kingdom. Love Finding Nemo but Festival of the Lion King is amazing so that's my number three um it's it's so much fun it's really interactive as well like they really get the audience involved um and it's like a circular theater um so you, there's people sitting all around the edges and it's just really lovely it's it's obviously the story of the lion king but simplified and um, but it has all the best songs in in it and it has um acrobats and um aerialists dancers singers um it's great it's really good fun um, in at number two for me is Happily Ever After. Okay. Happily Ever <laughs> After. There's just something very, uh, mad, just something magical about it. As you stand there and you watch it, the music is incredible. Um, the characters that are included, I think I remember saying that the sort of characters in there that you, you might not see mm. normally. And the song choices as well. The song choices as well were fantastic. And it brings a tear to your eye. Yeah. And it will do if it... When it comes back. Comes back, yeah. So in at number two for me is Phantasmic. Um, so you might have switched one and yeah, two. Yeah, so. uh, Phantasmic is great. It's a show, but also a fireworks and um, element show as well. It has like fire and everything. Um, and it's set... It's um, in Hollywood Studios, but the actual um, set of it is huge huge surrounded by a huge lake and then big mountains um it's quite dark as well there's a lot of like if you like villains there's a lot of like <laughs> a villain-esque-ness to it um but it also has all your favorite characters and one of my favorite moments is when all the characters come across on a big boat mm -hmm. waving their flags and i love it it's just so special um we always have to go see phantasmic it's my number one so in at number one for me, Happily Ever After, just because it's like the show at Disney. Mm. Um, you have to watch it um, when it comes back or when we get there. Um, but it's it's so special. We listened to the soundtrack for months before we went. Um, so we knew it off by heart. And then as soon as it actually started and we were actually there, um, and then we did crying. this. When I heard it, because every time we listen to oh, yeah. it, we'll be in the car. <laughs> uh, but it has the best songs. Um, Happy Ever After itself is a beautiful song. Um, but then it has like Hercules, Hunchback. Um, and it's just, it's a fireworks show, but it's also a projection show onto the castle. It's incredible. We've mm. always watched it from quite far back. Um, and I remember they have it on the Disney Parks um, YouTube channel, which was so interesting to watch because we could actually see the projections really well, uh, which we missed because we were obviously um, stood quite far back when we were actually there. So it was nice to see the projections close up. So I'd recommend watching that. There's not much to say about it really. It's just the best fireworks show ever. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> So that's it. That is our top threes at Walt Disney World for the moment. Um, fingers crossed we will all be back there soon. And maybe our top threes will change mm, um, as we possibly. experience more things. Obviously, our hearts go out to everyone that has had to cancel a trip or postpone a trip. Um, obviously, we were meant to be there at the moment as well for our honeymoon. Um, but yeah, we're just keeping hopeful that the magic will still be there for us when we can return. Also, just a massive uh, shout out to cast members mm. as well, who obviously have been affected by uh, cuts in jobs and yes. things like that. It's very, it's, very um, sad. Devastating to see because you make the magic. Yeah. Like a lot of our memories are because of cast members. Yeah. Um, so it's really heartbreaking to hear about all the job losses. And I just pray that. Um, it will end soon and that people will be able to um, hopefully return. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you are watching this and you've been affected by it, then yeah. our hearts go out to you. And thank you for everything that you did. Yeah, you definitely made our holidays. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed uh, chatting all about Walt Disney World and maybe we could do it for Universal as well. 
We could do. Yeah. I was also thinking we could probably do it for Merlin. We could do it for some, <laughs> yeah, some of the Merlin parks as well. Or we could just include them all in, in this uh, yeah. sort of thing. It'd be like top three Merlin favourites. Yeah, let us know if you would um, enjoy that as well. Mm. And yeah, we'll keep you updated with any future trips to theme parks that we have coming up. Hopefully we'll be able to get to a few more with our Merlin annual pass. <laughs> But as always, thank you so much for watching everyone and make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new and we will see you in our next video. Also, sorry, just massive thank you to everyone who purchased a Happy Chappy Phantom badge uh, and other badges as well from yes. our Etsy store. Uh, so they have gone to pre-order now, the Happy Chappy Phantom badges but uh, we should have some more arriving uh, towards the end of the month, sort of like the 23rd of October, I think they're mm -hmm. estimated to get to us. So as soon as they get to us, we'll send them out to you. But thank you, thank you so much for your love and support with those badges. Yes. And we will see you in our next one. Bye. Bye-bye. Toodle pipski. <laughs>